name is Sally Wood for Be Inspired and today we are going to make a new cover for a director's chair. You will need a sewing machine, an iron, a pair of scissors, some cotton thread, pins, a tape measure, a small ruler, I usually use a paint stick with the increments that I most usually use already marked off on it. Oops. And a metre rule or a yardstick. You will also need some fabric. I have samples here of denim. It's a tightly woven fabric. Uh, most Very suitable for this project. Hard wearing and will not give under people's weight. I have a canvas. This also is 100% cotton, like the denim, and um, is very sturdy. It will not give as somebody sits on it. And I also have here a sample of Linen Union. This is a woven fabric, just like the canvas. It too is very sturdy and will not give under somebody's weight. The director's chair is actually quite simple to recover. The back slips off and the seat also slides out. But you can see here that I need to take into account the slackness of this chair. I will remove the back. When I measure it, I'm going to allow for the slackness and I'm going to pull it against my body as tight as I can. And using my measuring tape, I'm going to measure from the outside edge to the other outside edge which is 21 inches. I will write this down in metric for anybody else on my paperwork. Then I'm going to slide this out of here. It's just held in with uh, wooden, wooden dowels. For this project I'm actually going to use two fabrics for a little bit of fun. I'm going to use the Linen Union and also the canvas. And I will measure them out. I will show you how to do that. I will also be using the existing template as well for all the folds that are need to be accounted for. First one is actually from this edge to this sewn hem is one and a half inches. So I'm going to be allowing two inches per side on top of my 21 inches, which makes it 25 inches wide. Lay the fabric out and smooth it, and with my yardstick, I will measure out 25 inches. I will cut one side and then the other. And it should be even. I'm going to show you how to cut a width of fabric out using a ruler and the edge of the salvaged edge of the fabric itself. I run the edge of the ruler along the edge of the fabric and I will cut up to 20, in this case, 25 inches. I move it and I just carry on cutting until I have my whole length of fabric cut off. If you can, you can often follow the weave, the woven lines to cut, that's how I often cut my fabrics, just by following those lines. It looks really impressive, I know. But it's a practice, makes perfect and years. The chair seat is 15 and a half inches, so I'm going to cut it to 16 and a half inches, which will allow for the seams that I'm going to be using or hems. And 
I know the fabric looks a little bit squiffy, but it will straighten up when it's all put together. The seat back is eight and a half inches. I'm going to cut that to nine and a half inches to allow for the seams and hems yet again. I'm going to repeat these cuts on the canvas that I've chosen to use. So this was eight and a half inches. I'm going to measure this off at eight and a half inches too. That's one back done. And now the seat to be done. And by doing that, I usually get the fabrics pretty spot on for measurements. The seat fabrics cut out too. Put the fabrics face together. Sometimes it's rather difficult to decide which is which, so that's entirely up to you. The canvases, both sides could be the same, you know, the right side. I'm going to sew this half an inch in from the edge, outside edge, so I'm just going to line that up on the foot, on the foot plate and start sewing. easing the fabric in as I go. If you wanted to put pins in, put them right angles to your sewing line so your sewing machine will roll over them. Personally I don't use very many pins so I'm not going to bother. And the same on the other edge of the fabric, leaving both ends open. I'm going to press the seam open. If you were going to do a single layer, you would want to fold over half an inch and then fold over again. I will write both sets of instructions out on my blog for you. And the same on the other side. Now I'm going to turn it the right way round. And you'll understand why I press the seams out. When I fold them over, I'm going to top stitch it and they will be nice and even to themselves when it's sewn into place. Okay, I'm going to run the outer side of the seat, co seat cover along this line here between the plastic and the metal. You could go wider if you wanted to, but this is my own personal choice. The stitch length is about 3.0 or 3.5 and the same on the other side of the seat. And there we go. Both sides should be about the same. Take the time and press the top and bottom fabrics so they're nice and smooth together like this. Then measure the, the existing fold or hem and when I first measured it it was one and a half inches. So I'm going to measure it to two and then fold under half an inch on either side. So there's one side. I'm going to fold it over, measure it off to two inches, 
which is on this line here. And I'm going to just press along that line to the top. Like that. Nice and firm. And I'm going to turn it around to the other side. And it looks a little bit wrinkly, but that's all going to come out. I'm going to fold that over two inches. I'm going to roll over around about half an inch, like that. And then iron that into place too. Just like this. And mind you, you don't steam your fingers because that gets a bit hot under there. There we go doesn't have to be perfect, just all in there. And the same on the previous side, just half an inch under. And I'm going to top stitch this in place. This is an ideal time to cut back any loose ends on your chair seat like that both ends before you sew and then they're nice and tight I would also just indent it slightly like that just just by about a quarter of an inch should be fine and then you'll push it in as you sew so that you've got quarter of an inch at the other end too. Okay, I've sewed down both sides of the um, hem, the side hems, leaving a, an area for the uh, downs to go in and secure it into the chair. For the chair back, it's a little bit wider than the chair. This should be 21 inches to match the chair seat and um, the folding back area is about three and a half inches so an allowance of four inches is perfect. Um, I've decided to do a little bit of decoration so I'm going to go above four inches so that my fold back is four inches and you'll see that shortly. Um, when I was cutting all of this out earlier, I was a bit dozy and cut it to the right side. And this happens sometimes, we get carried away. So I actually added on a section on each end of the back to compensate for that. And the other thing I decided to do was to actually allow it to fold um, to come in slightly either side and to do that I'm going to show you how to cut the angle which I used on the back of the chair seat. I measured down about half an inch which is about a centimeter and I marked it with a, a, bio, a pen and then because I'd allowed four and a half, four inches I need four and a half inches for the um, length that I'm going to be cutting to. So I mark that and then with a ruler I just drew a straight line from point A to point B like that and then I trimmed back the extra fabric like this on both sides which gave me the, the required angle that I decided to have. Some projects you'll think things up as you go along and that's perfectly okay. Now the back of the chair seat, I then folded over like I did for the, the actual chair seat, ironed it, top stitched it in place and here I have my angle that I, that I want. Um, <clears throat> by laying the chest part of the seat down 
and then the back next to it, I make sure that all of the pattern runs and matches. I've already done one side and I'll show you what I did in a minute, but I, I mat matched all the lines up. If you've got a floral, match the center of the floral to the center of the chair seat as best you can. And that works. Now on the other, on the side that I'm going to be working on, which is this side, I'm going to pin my fold. And the reason I do that is that it's then where I always want it until I finish the project. So there's my fold line. I'm going to put a pin there. And a pin here. I'm going to get rid of that part because I don't need it. And I'm going to fold over the back. This is my new line. With my ruler, I'm going to measure in the four inches where my new my inside fold is going to be. So it's there. And here. So I know that I cannot go further than that. That is going to be my inside, inside hem. Now I've already done the other side and I'm going to show you how, what I did on, on this side. I've decided to put buttons on to make it a little bit cuter and I decided that I needed to place the buttons within this uh, stripe here which is about an inch and a quarter. Actually, isn't it a little bit over than that? So I'm going to measure off my inch here, my inch and a little bit. Like that. And that is going to be my sew line for this side of the buttons. And then how I determine where to put the buttons, I'm going to fold the fabric in half like that. And I'm going to mark the center button only. So this all runs here. And then my center button I mark with a pin and it's going to go on this fold just like this. Now usually you then fold down the top to the center and you mark the next button exactly the same on the fold and then you fold the bottom up to the center keeping it straight allow allow this seam to run its course so you will find that I have a folded line here but the hem is actually there so I'm going to leave that and I'm then going to put my pin in here. Now, because two sides aren't always equal, I'm going to measure from the center pin to the first pin, which is actually about one and three quarter inches. And it's just a little bit above one and three quarter inches there. So I'm gonna alter this pin to one and three quarter. And actually I'm going to use a pen. I'm going to mark my center like that. It's all going to be hidden under the pins. I'm going to mark my pin this side, one and three quarters. And I'm also going to mark the pin this side, one and three quarters, like that. This means I can remove these marker pins from where I'm going to be sewing. Now, the buttons that I have used are this brand, they're metal buttons, and they're quite simple to cover, so I'm going to show you how to cover one. These ones I prefer, they have little teeth in them. I found that the circular ones that you use a gadget and push it all together, 
the button tag is on the, on the base and sometimes they pull off, which is very, very annoying. So I'm going to show you quickly how to do the covered button that I need. Right. Now this fabric is rather awkward to see which way is up and I have discovered that if the smoother side is where they have put the fire retardancy on and the slightly lumpy side is the right side. So I'm going to turn it upside down so that I've got the wrong side fire retardancy side against my button and I don't tend to use their circular gauge. I just cut round about half an inch, a generous half inch centimetre all the way around like this and then I use a substantial pin rather than a dressmaker's pin. A dressmaker's pin is narrow with bulk either a bubble on the top or sometimes a metal. So I use a substantial pin and I start north and south, what I call north and south, east and west. I'm going to be running the button that way. So I pull the fabric down and over the teeth and I push the fabric against the teeth to hold it. So that's one side. And then I go to the opposite side and I do exactly the same thing. This is usually on the warp or weft thread where it's strongest and I pull that down and hook it over. Then I say east and west, same thing, it's warp or weft thread where they're stronger. Pull them over and secure them under those teeth like that. And the same on the other side and this this fabric holds a little bit if I was to use a silk I would put a a little bit of padding underneath because it they just look better now I'm going to go to the corners here well corners the sides here and I'm just going to pull in from the center to where I've already pulled the uh, fabric over so and then the same again I'm just going to pull it round and pop it underneath like that and make it as smooth as I can and then I work to the third corner over just make sure that there's no pleats in the side this can be awkward with thicker fabrics or fabrics with no structure to them. Let's say I usually um, I usually put uh, a stabilizer on the back of a very flimsy fabric just so that it follows through and holds. And then with the base, I'm just going to pop that on like that. And now this fabric's thin enough that I can actually use my fingers and thumb. And I'm going to just pop it around, and it should click. I mean, click. Now back to sewing all of this together. I have my buttons and if I just put them on there they'll be quite wobbly which I don't want a wobbly look, I want them to look firm. So I'm going to use a little bit of bump. You could use curtain lining just fold it over so it's a little bit thick enough and then I'm going to make a make a clip in the center then fold it that way and I'm going to cut crossways in the center so I'm going to fold it like this whoops there we go I'm going to take a little nick there that's my center I'm going to measure my one and three quarters up the center which takes me to there and I'll do that again and I'm going to clip you can mark it if you want. Sometimes I get it wrong when I eyeball it. And I'll do the same again here. Let's have a look. There's, there's my center clip. 
and there's the one I want to make on here. So I'm going to do that. Pop that there. Now, <clears throat> with this, I'm going to fold. I'm going to pull out my fabric slightly, but I'm going to fold along this center line for the buttons. And right here on this side is my first one. So I'm going to remove that and pull the back fabric off because I only want to be cutting the front side. And I'm going to cut, like before, just a little nick. say not going through to the back pull it apart put it away I'm going to do my center one I'll roll that slightly I'm going to cut my center one still pulling the back and then I'm going to just roll for the third one And here comes the magic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to slide it underneath here to align with the holes that I've just cut in the fabric. So let's have a look. There's here. lining up with that hole. If you, you might be able to see it there. That's where my first button is going to be. And then it should roll up it's a little bit difficult to see, I must say. On up to the second one and smooth out. Now I'm going to sew these buttons on. I'm going to push the shank through the hole that I made on the front of the fabric. Shank go through the hole. There we go. You just about see it. And then it goes through the hole on the bump all the way to the back. Now I'm going to flip this because I want to, I want to make sure that the back doesn't roll when I'm doing doing all of this. So here we go. And make sure that's all folded, all laying out, and then I'm going to peel it back, and I can feel the shank of the button between underneath my fingers, and I'm just going to quickly sew the button on. I usually do about three or four stitches and then it's done. It shouldn't pull off. I, pre I push it out, make sure it's all flat, the second button, and then push through the fabric like before. So the shank goes through all the way through the fabric, like that. You just about see it straighten it up and then through the hole that I made on the bump I'm going to press it down so it's nice and flat it's going to move it's going to move I'm going to peel it back slightly find the shank with my fingers cut it off put it forward third one through the hole. Now the reason why I did the buttons this way is because they won't they won't um, pop open. If I had done that way, the the fabric, if it pulls, will open up and it probably wouldn't show. But I did it just in case it did. Anyway, I made it flat. Wiggle it around a bit. Back find the shank and so there we have three buttons done to match the three that I've already and now I'm going to just press this side piece into place along that pink line moving the pins as I go to go up this little stripe here all the way so there's my 
four inch mark there. I'm going to just double check it before I set it. And now I've actually marked one out on there. So there we go. It's exactly where I thought it was. To wriggle them in. And then just steam that into place too. The buttons are far enough back that they're not going to interfere with my um, sewing when I do it. I'm this outside edge of my foot with the outside of this hem here, like this. Drop the knee, drop the, the foot down about equal and I'm going to go forward, back and forward, just run it as close as I can, all the way to the top. And the same again, just forward and back. And then I'm going to do it like before, just sort of half a foot width in, next to there, just to hold it firm. This fabric might have a bit of give to it with somebody leaning the back, so that's why I'm doing it this way. There we go, and now I'm going to trim off all the loose ends. There, all loose ends have been removed. I'm going to quickly press these up. Slide the dowels into place like that and push them back just a little ways and then very carefully push them right down into the into the fold of the fabric and ease them into place either side. Should be right. There we go. Slide them into <laughs> Thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button if you want to see more. See you next time. Ciao.